Howdy. Welcome back to Dion Talk. In this video, I want to talk about the pros and cons of owning real estate yourself or being part of a syndication. This is something where I have looked into just enough to know that I have a strong enough opinion not to need to look into it anymore. But today I have Dana, the CEO of Hemlane, who has a property management software platform that has over 4,000 owners on it with over 27,000 rental units uh, using the platform. So I the thing I like about this, Dana, is, is you have a mountain of data that I, I wouldn't have access to if I didn't know you. So I appreciate you coming on here and sharing with everybody. And so I think maybe we'll go back and forth. Let's start with pros to syndication. Great. I can. Um, hi, everyone. I can get started with that. Um, I think the biggest reason people syndicate is it's easy at the beginning. In other words, you can go ahead and um, give someone money. It's much more passive for you um, to get started and just put some money in, and suddenly you um, and, and and suddenly you own part of a rental property. Um, of course, if you're the syndicate, the actual one who's getting the capital, it's slightly more challenging because um, I I think people think it's easier to raise money than it is. You can raise money when you have a track record, but when you don't have a track record, only your friends will will trust you. But if you're just going into the syndicate, so you're thinking, hey, I've got you know uh, $50,000, I could buy a single family home, or I could put it into a syndicate, which one should I do? Um, if from that perspective, it's just, I see so many people, especially with the convenience culture, choosing the what I call the slightly more lazy route of great, I'll give it to someone else and have them go ahead and um, go through the, um, go through and select the property, do all the management and just, you know, from a pass through side, obviously give me um, the income as well as any uh, pass through tax benefits of it. Um, so I would say that is the first one um, with the syndicate is that it's much easier to get started in real estate and start owning that some portion of real estate, even if it's like a fractional ownership. So I like that. The first, first one is, is kind of how passive it is. Uh, and this is a, a pro that I would think is when you're first starting in real estate, if you buy it in your own name, you, you don't have a track record. But if you're buying into a syndication, you can, if you do your research and you do diligence, is make sure you're investing in a syndication where it's not their first rodeo either. So you can benefit by standing on the experience that the syndicator has. Even though it's not the strategy that I chose, I do see that as a benefit. Let's do a con next on this okay, one. So and and here's the big one I see. It is hard when someone has a track record when interest rates were artificially low. And you had a 10-year um, uh, runway of the market going up. Even if they that syndicate is a bad operator, which there are so many that are coming to fruition and light now that people are seeing, even if they were a bad operator, they probably still made money. And this market today is really stress testing these syndicates and how good they actually are, given variable interest rates, them potentially getting into situations they did not foresee would happen. And so I think from that perspective, one of the potential risks is understanding, even if they have a track record, was it because the market had been going up every single month and that everyone, even the fools, could get rich? Or was it that they were actually talented and even in a down market, they still were able to, or the interest rate we're in now, they were still able to um, uh, pull through with the profits that you would expect? I, th I think there was a lot of that experience with people who were doing um, the Burr method or flipping. We had 10 years with interest rates declining and prices going up to where you can make mistakes. And as long as you delayed it long enough, the market corrected your mistakes. And that was happening with syndications yep. too. So that leads into my first con is the lack of control, right? A lot of the syndications will make projections and then have colorful charts to back them up. And they were making projections in 2020, 2021 of look how much the rent's gone up in the last couple of years. Here's how great our syndication will be if that continues. Versus if you're an investor, I've invested, even though rents have never once market-wide gone down since 1940 when we started tracking the data, I invest planning on rents could go down. How would this investment look if they did? Because in local markets, rents have gone down. Market-wide, it hasn't. But with syndications, I have yet to see the one that says, 
here's our projections of success if rents decline by 5%. It's usually, if the continuation of rent increases stays at its current rate, here's how much money you're gonna make. And so that's my first con is that lack of control where the risk you're taking is based on someone else's risk tolerance instead of yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Great. I couldn't agree more with that on that. When I make my own mistakes, I feel slightly better about it because it's like, well, that was on me. I was foolish. But when someone else makes a mistake, actually my anxiety is higher because I was like, I can't control this. I literally cannot from that perspective have made the decision at all. And it actually like increases the level of anxiety. So I agree with that on the the level of control. One of the uh, potential benefits of a syndicate is if you don't know anything about property management um, and you're not using something like Hemlane, so you have no background um, or wanting to be in the property management, you will, and this kind of goes with the passive at the beginning of sourcing and finding the deal, you also are passive in the property management side, you will just go ahead and get a report every single month with everything put into it. Um, And you and a lot of times the syndicates, the people managing the syndicate are also invested in it. So there's from that perspective, some sort of stake in the game. Um, But I think it's much more passive on the management side. Um, so, so yeah, passive on the management side, I absolutely agree with that because uh, managing my rental portfolio it is, is well, I call it passive because comparing two hours a month to the 50 to 60 hours a week I was doing with my W2, two hours a month is very passive. But two hours a month with syndication would be a lot. You're just giving your money to them and you're tracking what's going to happen in three to five years from now. And there's not a lot of active hands on monthly uh, activity going on with that. Um, so the other pro with syndications is so we've talked about it's closer to passive. You, you don't have to actively manage it. Uh, you get a lot of the benefits from real estate that you don't get if you make other investments, right? If you invest in growing a business or if you invest in the stock market, there is a lot of things in real estate that just don't exist in those other asset classes. And so I think if you don't have the capacity to self-own, at least there's a way to get into real estate, right? There's there's REITs, real and based real estate investment trust. There's another option too, but it's one of the, you know, the highest performing asset classes over the longest period of time that's created the most millionaires. So I can see with catches, you know, catch phrases like that and facts about the industry that there are people who want to get into it that don't want to take the time to, how do you find a property manager? How do you learn to self-manage yourself? How do you do all of the things it takes? How do you hunt and find the deals, right? The amount of time it takes to own versus the amount of time it takes to syndicate. The benefit to syndication is kind of like you said, you can just throw your money at somebody, right? The, mm-hmm. the, when you take out the level of work involved, that would that would be a benefit for the lazy person. There are still reasons why that's not what I do, but that's a benefit too. Yeah, yeah. And then um, on the, on the um, con side and the disadvantage, which is why I prefer direct investment into properties and, and don't do syndication, is um, on the control side of the operations and um, operating expenses. So while it's more work to find and source your own deal, whether it's a single family home, a duplex, a fourplex, whatever it is you're purchasing, it's a lot more work. But when you start talking about um, being able to control your own destiny, you can't do that with a syndicate. You can't say at this point, I'm going to do a 1031. At this point, I'm going to restructure it because there is this life event. Or you also can't on the operation side say, okay, on the repair side, I'm going to make X, Y, and Z decision. You are basically giving that and your financial freedom and your financial success to someone else to make those decisions for you. And a lot of times you don't know what's going to happen um, when you're going to retire when you kind of think about um, doubling down on an investment, refinancing it, et cetera. And by going direct, you have all of that control to be able to do that yourself. Yeah, that's that's definitely on the con side if you don't control the exit strategy and you don't know how it's going to line up with what's going on in your personal life. My my last con on the side of syndications would be, and I take this from Thatch Nguyen, right? So, so he's a very successful investor. He actually says, when it comes to syndications, the bigger the name, the smaller the profit. 
which means the way advertising works, the syndications you're most likely to hear about will be attached to the biggest names. So the more syndications you hear about are probably going to be the ones that perform the poorest. So uh, to me, that's a con because if you're if you're so lazy to get into real estate, you want to throw your money at a syndication. Are you going to be the type of person who puts the effort into finding the right syndications versus the ones that come knocking on your door? So then, Dion, what are you, what do you do? Um, so from that, with the potential pros and cons, how did you weigh? Because you're going one direction. How did you think about that overall? So the, so the first thing was um, I was not an accredited investor when I started investing. And, and for a lot of the syndications that I would even consider to even have them advertised to you, you have to be a accredited investor. You have to make, I think it's $200,000 a year or a million dollar net worth or whatever it is. There's a barrier in place, which Brandon Turner explained very well. The government doesn't want you to be able to lose um, a mom and pop's $50,000 life savings. They want you to be able to lose a million dollars, $50,000. I don't want anybody to lose my money at all. I don't care which pot I'm coming from. <laughs> uh, so I haven't looked at syndications. One, for the lack of control. Two, I like the idea of depreciation and write-offs, meaning that I can make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and not have a tax obligation at all, carry forward a loss again this year. I, I like the control. I like having something like the binder strategy where my tenants ask me to raise the rent. That has that doesn't seem to happen with syndications. Uh, uh, are you Are you familiar with Coach Carson? He was at the one or two uh, I, event. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's stellar. I love his his concept from his book, which I didn't find until after reaching financial freedom, but it, it lined up like the one rental at a time theory does too. It's for me, I don't want a large syndication. I don't want a large, I don't want to have unit bragging counts. There are people who say, oh, I own a thousand, I own 1200 rentals and they own, you know, 0.6% of a, you know, 0.6 of a percent of the syndication. I don't want bragging rights. What I wanted was, like Coach Carson says, he wants to be the small and mighty investor, the freedom that comes from having a small portfolio. For me, the freedom comes from having the right amount of cash flow from the least amount of units. Not something I could do with a syndication, not having the control, the risks that come with owning rental properties myself, the ability for me to control the diversification, right? I, I, I diversify in two specific ways that I wouldn't even have the input levers to help my syndication even think that these were concepts to do. One is I don't want a 10 unit apartment complex. All of those 10 units are in one space, pulling all of your tenants from the same economic drivers. I want five duplexes that are at least 10 miles apart from each other so that each of those units is pulling from different economic drivers in a base, a port, a college, a hospital, or Boeing or Amazon could close down, go on strike or move away. And I am impacted on a couple of units, not the entire building. And then I control my unit type. I want about one third military, one third section eight, and one third working or retired. So a pandemic, a prolonged government shutdown, a stock market crash in totality would impact a third of my tenants to the point where all the way through 2020 and 2021, I never had a later missing rent payment because I had diversified tenants in class C properties. I prefer class C. Now, some syndications are class C as well. But because it's easier to replace an income at a class C rental type than it is a class A or B, so you're less likely to have tenant turnover in a bad economic time than you are with class C. So that's it's that control, the structure, the ability to put a portfolio together that lets me sleep well at night, even though I retired 100% invested in real estate. I don't own a stock. I don't have a penny in a retirement account. If I did, if I did either of those things, I'd still be working. Instead of diversifying in two specific ways with the control and the ability to self-educate myself to invest this way, I made work optional. Whereas with the syndication, you, you, I think where syndications make a lot of sense is if you're a really high income earner and the best thing you can do to make money is continue the job that you have, but you want to do something with your money, sure. For most of my investing, I never made more than $60,000 until the last couple of years at my job. Most of my years, I made fifty or $60,000. So it was as productive for me to acquire the next rental as it was to do anything at my job to increase money. So there's a pretty long list of reasons why I prefer self-ownership. Now, there are some cons, right? While it takes two hours a month to self-manage my 16 rental units now, and it's about to be 17 because my other unit is like a week away from finishing, finally. Contractor said three months, we're at eight months now. So that's how that goes <laughs> and why this is my last burr. But so the amount of time it took to do the burr, I don't ever want to go through that again, but it takes two hours a month to manage my rentals. Now, when I started, it seemed like it took 20 hours a week, not two hours a month, but 20 hours a week to manage the one tenant that I had. 
it was because I didn't have my systems in place. I hadn't educated myself. So the cons to, to self-managing real estate, to owning real estate, whether you have a property manager or not, is there's a steep learning curve. Once you're past that curve, it becomes a lot more passive because real estate investing in a syndication is fairly passive. You earn the money, allocate it to the investment. Real estate investing, buying the properties, acquiring the properties, learning the strategy, finding the market, hunting for the deals, negotiating on the deals, closing on the deals, stabilizing the deals is not passive at all. You're talking about doubling your workload for five to 10 years. And then you hit that 10 year point like I did, and now it's two hours a month. I don't really want to add any more units. I hardly ever, it's been five years since I've had to go to a rental unit where I had to go myself. Because of options like Hemlane, I can, um, th this next winter, I'm going to spend as much of it as I can in Thailand. If I have a tenant turnover, I'm going to take that month, step up to the tier, have a lease showing done. Um, and then the next month, I'll probably step down to the tier that I do use constantly. Um, and th the benefits of this program let me do that with a small portfolio. It's possible to reach that with syndications, but I wasn't a high income earner and it was more productive for me to, to invest my money. So I'm gonna ask you how people can get a hold of you first, but the last thing I'm gonna tease at the end of this video is in our next video, Dana and I are going to do a thought experiment. And it's, it's where uh, off camera, I asked Dana when she thought she was going to retire and I got a, a response that basically made me think that she doesn't plan on retiring because she loves your work so much. <laughs> so in our next video, I'm going to talk to her about three things she might not have thought about. And at the end of the video, the thought experiment is to see if her opinion has changed. If somebody has questions, Dana, how can they get a hold of you? Yeah, you can reach out to me at Dana, D-A-N-A -A, at Hemlane, H-E-M-L-A-N-E.com. Um, we help focus to make your life easier with direct investments. So if you're owning rental properties, want that control, want that transparency, but also want less work to do, make it a little bit more passive. We're here to support you. And I'm looking forward to be on the next video with you um, about retirement. Awesome. And remember, if you want to try out Hemlane, go to hemlane.com. And if you want 20% off your first year, put Dion Talk in as your referral and you can get 20% off that first year. Until our next video, thanks for coming to my Dion and Dana talk. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.